Hello, welcome back. Now, remember the beautiful Elizabeth Bennet in Pride and Prejudice? Well, Miss Bennet's now got a new role as a single mum with dreadlocks. And what would Mr. Darcy think? Love it, it'll I mean, look at me. I'm hitting 30, unmarried mother, broke on the doll, going deaf in my left ear. Sitting having dinner with a guy who spent time reading as the Green Lantern. No, no, I was in love. Let's have sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the street. <laughs> now, yes. This year's love. Sophie! Sophie! <laughs> well, Jennifer Ely, who played Sophie in that new film, but also played Elizabeth Bennet, joins us now. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Is it nice to play something so very different from the very prim and proper Elizabeth? Oh, well, Elizabeth's not that prim and proper. But it was, it was wonderful to play somebody who, who didn't have to be, um, didn't have to have warmth and be standing by her man and... You know. Yeah, because a lot of the parts that you've played in the end, uh, in the past, have been these kind of very warm women, haven't they? And mm. they have been very loyal and everything else. And this is a quite closed-off character, isn't she? Well, she is. She's very, very defensive. Won't let anyone get anywhere near her at all. And you were saying those dreadlocks <laughs> were real. That was not a wig. No, we, I had them put in. It was my idea, so I could never really complain about it. <laughs> How did they do that? Oh, I um, went to this place. They tie them on. Yeah. And they were down, they're very, very heavy. They were down to sort of my waist, some of them were. They were all different lengths, all different colours. Yeah. And I had them in for about two and a half months. And could you sort of wash them? I that? could. The trouble is that I washed it about every day and it never dried. So oh. it, the small of my back was damp for two months. No. I'm sure <laughs> permanently wet hair. And you also offered, because you wear a nose stud in, in the uh, film as mm. well, and you offered to get your nose pierced for it. Yeah, I think I did, actually, yeah. I'm sort of taking it rather far. It was. <laughs> you didn't have to in the end. <laughs> no, thank goodness. We had a magnet. And you have half the magnet on the inside of your nose and the other half on the outside. Well, so it's slightly less painful, I suppose. Yes, you don't want to sneeze. <laughs> it's a snotty magnet flying through the air on this <laughs> Oh, sorry, I had to... <laughs> much information, Ross. No, 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 no. But this, this, this Sophie who you play, mm. she's a bit of an old toff, although she's this dreadlock thing that lives in Camden in North London. Tell us a bit about Sophie in the film. Sophie. Sophie is, uh, Sophie went to Rodine, um, and she's running away from that as fast as she can. She's been in abusive relationships, she's a single mum, um, but she lives on a barge, so she's still got the trendy, mm. the trendy thing, and has the dreads, and it's, uh, but she's unhappy, she's desperately unhappy and lonely. And, and it's about sort of three couples, isn't that, too, over the space of a few years, sort of all swap parts. Sort of La Ronde, yes. Yeah. And you're saying it, it showed you a different side of London? Yes, well, it was just wonderful to, to be living in London and filming here is for one thing. And I got to know Camden quite well. One particular parking lot very well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you live in London anyway? I do. All right, so yeah. it's just a different bit of it anyway. Mm. Yeah. Well, we've got another clip from the film, um, and it's... Well, you'll probably explain it better afterwards. Have a look at this <laughs> okay. and sort of tell us what's been happening. It's really pathetic. I'm sure there are predatory women out there as well, but it's no excuse. Oh. Excuse me? I mean, don't you worry about the consequences of treating people like dirt, that something horrible could happen. I want to enjoy myself before I die. See, I'm going to die young. I know, I just, I just feel it. I mean, all my heroes died young. Modigliani, uh, Egon Schiele, Alexander the Great. I'm never going to have 40. That's a brilliant excuse. <laughs> well, it's random. I like random things. Chance. Yeah, but after a while, doesn't one pair of drugs just feel like another pair of drugs? Good question. <laughs> so is he somebody that you have a relationship with? Isn't it? Yes. Right, it starts right after that. Right, so that's just mm. the beginning of it. And mm. when's this film out? Friday, tomorrow. Oh, right. And, and you've seen it all? And yes, I love it. Do you, do you like it. going along and sitting in the cinema with, you know, just a proper audience there watching? I haven't done that ever. Yeah. No. But at the sort of screening, I mean, it was an invited screening. But I um, don't like watching myself, but the rest of the film is... So as long as you can enjoy the rest of the whole film, but you mm. still think it's a bit... So I don't know, embarrassed? Is it embarrassing to watch yourself up there? I don't know. Well, it's, it's a bit of a shock. Yeah. It's just a shock to see what your face does. Were you there with the rest of us on Sunday nights watching Pride and Prejudice? No. <laughs> okay, so you didn't do that, no, because no. you probably had enough of it by that point. That was, I love it when it's sort of stranded like that on Sundays. It's something you really look forward to at the end of the became, weekend, isn't it? Well, that became such a focal point in the nation's viewing. When you were filming that, and it was obviously beautifully done, so you knew you were working for a quality show.
But did you realise that the entire nation would get so gripped by that, Jen? Oh, no idea at all. I think if I'd had any idea how many people would see it, I'd still be under a sofa somewhere in Derbyshire. <laughs> I had no idea it was going to be such a success. We're, we're just saying as well that it's the thing that's going to follow you around for the rest of your life, too. <laughs> But it's not a bad thing to be following around. There it was just wonderful. Um, your mother was an actress, Rosemary Harris. Yeah. And, um, and your father's a writer. Did you spend mu much of your childhood kind of going around different sets and theatres and sort of travelling around the world? Yes, we did. I changed schools 18 times. And, and my father's American and mum's English. And so we, we went back and forth wherever she was working. My father's just, a, he's, he's a writer. Not just a writer, but he's a writer. And so they're fairly portable. And I'm an only child, so we were sort of a bit of a portable unit. So, so from an early age, did you always want to act, having seen it at that kind of close no, range? No, I wanted to write, actually. I'm not quite sure how I started acting, but it's, it's fun. And when you chose acting, then you could have, I suppose, trained and worked in America, but you've, you've chosen Britain. Why was that decision made? Well, I wanted a classical training, and so I wanted to come to drama school here. And then I, I just love it. I, I love England. I, I love living in London. And you've got so no, no American accent at all? Mm, it comes out. Oh, does it? Mm. But did, did you until you were sort of 17, 18? Yes. I flipped back and forth because when I was a kid, we'd come over to school here yeah. and I'd be teased. So I learned an English accent and I'd go back to America and the same would happen. A child who changes school 18 times learns to adapt, I'm guessing, yeah? Good training for acting. <laughs> Good training for acting, yes. And uh, any plans for you and your mum to work together? Is that something you'd like to do? Yes, well, we have. Well, we haven't actually worked together. We've done, we, twice we've shared a part um, in the Camera Lawn. Uh, that was on Channel 4 and about 92 we shared a part and uh, we just did a film called The Taste of Sunshine directed by Istvan Sabo where we also shared. So that, that you playing your, your mother's daughter in... No, the same, the, actually the, the same, same character. Part, yeah. Yeah. Younger and older. That must be lovely oh. actually to do. It is nice. If you get on well. <laughs> it is nice but unfortunately we never get to um, be opposite one another because... We're not in the same scene. You have to find a project they can be different people in. Mm. Well, well, well done. If nothing else, for wearing those dreadlocks for two and a half months. <laughs> Thank I can't you. believe you did that. Well done. Yeah, that's a huge. Yeah. The film's out tomorrow, and it's called This Year's Love. Mm. Thank you very much, Jennifer.